And plus, when I was leaving the classroom, I asked two questions to you. One of them is, if, how can you speed up your car? I asked this question to you, how can you speed up your car? Of course, you can speed up an object, not only car, by applying a force in the same direction of the motion. How can you slow down an object? By a force which is in the opposite direction of the motion. But magnetic force is none of that. Because magnetic force always acts perpendicular to direction of motion. This is the rule. Magnetic force acting on a charge in a magnetic field always acts perpendicular to direction of motion. Which means it cannot speed up an object. It cannot slow down an object. Now what, what is the force called in physics if it acts perpendicular to direction of motion? What is it called? It's called centripetal force. So what does centripetal force do? It keeps cause the object to follow a circular path. Then we can say that magnetic force is a centripetal force. Magnetic force is a centripetal force which causes this charged particle to follow a circular path. So if a charged initial velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field, so this is the condition for what? If the charged velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field, it's the condition for maximum magnetic force. Yani if charged initial velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field, in this case we know that magnetic force is maximum. Maximum magnetic force acts on it. And also, and also, the magnetic force itself acts perpendicular to direction of motion, direction of velocity. Yani, F is, F magnetic is perpendicular to velocity vector. This tells you that magnetic force is centripetal force because in physics, any force which acts perpendicular to the direction of the motion is called centripetal force. Magnetic force in here is the centripetal force. Uh, remember the centripetal force? The particle must follow a <coughs> circular path. Yes, if a charged particle is moving inside a magnetic field perpendicular to the magnetic field, it will follow a circle. It will follow a circle. Only direction of the motion will change, but charge speed cannot increase, charge speed cannot decrease. Only the force, magnetic force, will be used to change the direction of motion. Okay, so you can use also right hand rule to know that. Here you see that I put a magnetic field which is cross. What does it mean? Into the board. And magnetic field in here is everywhere into the board. And a positive charge is moving in this magnetic field. So this blue line is representing the positive charge. So that initially it's moving to the right. By applying right angle, we can find a magnetic force acting on the charge. Magnetic field is into the board. V is to the right. And look at my palm. It's pointing up to the plane of the board. So, pointing in the center. And so, of course, Centripetal force always points to the center of the circular path. Choose another location. When the charge is moving in here on the circle, you know, the direction of the velocity always tangent to the circle, which is called tangential velocity. In chapter 1, section 2, we studied this. So V is up to the board now. Magnetic field is into the board. So V is up to the board. Now look at my palm. It is to the left. The left is where? Pointing where? Again, center. Choose another position, let's say that particle is in here. It's moving tangent to the circle. It's moving tangent to the circle like this. Again, at my right angle. Magnetic field is into the board, yes. V is to the left, yes. Look at my power. Pointing downward. Again, pointing towards the center. So it doesn't matter. From which location you will choose. All this you are going to observe that. There is that centripetal force pointing the center of the circular path. So we should know that, yes, if a charge initial velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field, <coughs> the at condition when there is a net maximum magnetic force acting on the charge, the charge will follow a circular path. Absolutely, it will follow a circular path. Now, uh, let's 
There's a mystery exam question about this. Let's answer this question after the Bible continue. Uh, open mystery exam question page. Okay, question number uh, seven. Question number seven. Find it. If a positively charged particle is moving with an initial velocity, and velocity's direction is perpendicular to the uniform magnetic field. The path of the particle will be A, linear path and then helical path. Linear is straight line path. What does helical mean? The next slide I'm going to explain. A, hel B, helical path. C, only linear path. D, circular path. So, if it is perpendicularly moving to the magnetic field, it will follow a circular path just like this. Answer is going to be circular path. Be careful, here it must be perpendicular to magnetic field. And the maximum magnetic force must act on the charged particle. In this case, this particle will follow a circular path. But circular path can be counterclockwise or clockwise, possible. Two things determine direction of this circular path being clockwise or counterclockwise. Two things. A charge follows clockwise or counterclockwise circle depending on two parameters. One of them is the direction of the magnetic field. So the magnetic field can be into the page or out of the page. This is the magnetic field column. Out of the page, into the page. Out of the page, into the page. Second factor sign of the charge. A charge can be positive or negative. So this column is representing sign of the charge. Negative, positive. Positive, negative. So depending on these two quantities, circular path can be clockwise or counterclockwise. Now it's, this table is a practical method to know that. If magnetic field is that, what does it mean? Out of the pitch. And if the sign of the electric charge is minus, mm, that and minus, are they similar? Because if you put many dots together, what happens? It becomes a minus. Huh? If magnetic field is that and charge is negative, so circle is absolutely counterclockwise. Absolutely. If magnetic field is cross, and charges positive, okay? Turn this cross a little, rotate it a little, it becomes positive. Again, counterclockwise. Counter if these are similar to each other, yani one of them change to another one, dot can change to minus, cross can change to plus. In this case, circle is counterclockwise. Similar. But what about others? Dot and Dot and positive. Okay, it's not easy to change dot to positive. Cross and negative. They are opposite almost, not similar. In this case, circle is going to be clockwise. clockwise. Similars, counterclockwise circles, not similars, clockwise circles. Dot negative. Counterclockwise, cross positive. Counterclockwise, but dot positive or cross negative. They are clockwise circles. Now, this exam question is this. Read. Open page. Question number uh, 16, I think. Uh, yes, 16. Determine the path of positively charged particles. That is moving in the plane of a page inside a uniform magnetic field that is directed into the page. Cross. cross and positive. Cross and positive. Similar, are they? They are similar. So it's going to be a counterclockwise circle. Let's read the answer. Moving in a clockwise circular path. No. Moving in a counterclockwise circular path. Correct. Linear path out of the page? No, they follow circles. Linear path into page, not correct. So it must be counterclockwise circle. Now, go back to question 8. 
Question eight. This is the question again. A negative charge, this time charges? Negative. negative. A negative charge. A negative charge moves counterclockwise. So they must be similar, right? Yes. yes. Negative and dot are similar. No. Dot? Oh, okay. So easy. And you don't even want to, oh. no need to read the problem one. Negative and dot, Same. counterclockwise. Okay, so this is counterclockwise, a negative charge. Yes, it must be a negative, it must be that similar. So magnetic field is A into the page. No. B out of the page. Correct. So B is going to be the answer for this question. Yes? Teacher, for question seven, what was, like, if the desk is parallel, is it seven? Parallel is if the charged particle moves parallel to magnetic field. There is no magnetic force acting on it. It will follow linear path, correct. Linear path. No force acts on it. If no force acts on it, going to be low linear shot. Objects follow linear path. Okay, so that we will solve one chapter in question. After that, we will continue. This is one of the chapter in question, question number 13. A proton. Proton. Positive. A proton is positive. Moving horizontally. This picture is given about this problem. According to this picture, we are going to ask you question. It's moving horizontally, as you see. Proton is moving horizontally. And this is a region where there is a uniform magnetic field perpendicular to the velocity. So if velocity and magnetic field is perpendicular, maximum magnetic force acts on the charge, and charge follows a circle. It follows a circle of that. A counterclockwise circle because magnetic field is given. Cross, the charge is positive, so it will follow counterclockwise. So, let's as shown in the figure, as I said, this figure is given. Describe the proton's subsequent motion. Got it? When proton enters inside this magnetic field, what will happen? So, its motion will be what kind of motion? What kind of path will it follow? So, let's answer. We know that. When this proton enters inside this magnetic field, it follow, must follow counterclockwise circle. But this magnetic field is not so large region. It's a very small region. Yeah, it will deflect counterclockwise absolutely. It will deflect counterclockwise, but magnetic field will start, will finish in here, ends. If magnetic field ends, will there be a magnetic force on that particle? If magnetic field ends in here, from then on, is there a magnetic force acting on the charge? No. If no force acts on the charge, what happens? It's it follows a straight line back. Yeah, it. it's going to be curved in the magnetic field, counterclockwise curve. But after that, as soon as it is the curve, this region, it will follow a straight line path. So this is going to be a, sometimes called arc in mathematics, sometimes called curve. It's going to be a counter, counterclockwise curve or counterclockwise arc. What if, what if the electric an electron? How would the electron behave under the same circumstances? Yeah, yeah. inside the same magnetic field, okay. just into the page. You are going to send not proton, electron. electron. Send an electron. So, negative and cross. Clockwise. It makes a clockwise circle. So it will follow it, but it cannot be perfect circle because after, from that point on, magnetic field ends. If magnetic field ends, it will follow it straight down after that. Yeah, it will follow a. So what kind of uh, this clo clockwise, clockwise arc? or clockwise curve. Then leave this magnetic field region by following a straight line path. Yes, question. Um, teacher, if the magnetic field continues upwards and then... If continues, of course, it can continue bending. It can continue bending if the region is large enough. So it bends, 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 finally leaves. So it will only be a half circle? Yes. In this you have circle, but in here, reach is not so large, that's why it only makes a curve, because we don't know the size of the magnetic field in here, 
uh, that's why we can say make a counterclockwise curve, but this curve can change to a semicircle depending on the size of the magnetic field. We just learned that. We just learned that if charged particle moves perpendicular to the magnetic field, maximum magnetic force acts on the charge and charge follows a circular path. What if charge moves inside this magnetic field not perpendicularly? If it moves inclined, inclined, you know what does inclined mean? Some angles, 30, 40, 50, not 90, not 0, not 180. Any angle different than those numbers. So as you see, magnetic field is from left to right in here. It's from left to right. And velocity is inclined. Inclined. In this case, what will happen? Now, we know that in physics, if a vector is inclined, we resolve that vector into components. One component of this vector is going to be horizontal. Sometimes we say x component. Another component is going to be vertical. Sometimes we will say y component. Yeah, and velocity in here, this velocity, has two components. One component is a horizontal component, sometimes called, as I said, the x component. And I represented that component by green vector to the left, as you see. So from the tip of the velocity, I'm going to draw a perpendicular line. So it's going to be horizontal component. But when I check this horizontal component, I will see that this horizontal component is parallel to magnetic field. Is it parallel? Yeah. This green line and red line are parallel? Mm -hmm. Yes, in the same direction. That's why I will indicate this component as parallel component. Parallel to magnetic field lines. But there's one more component, which is vertical. Now this velocity has vector has a vertical component. A vertical component is perpendicular to magnetic field lines. Perpendicular. So it's why I represented it by this sign. This is indicating vertical. It's why it's perpendicular. Sorry. This velocity component is perpendicular to magnetic field lines. Okay, then. These two components, one component is affected by the magnetic field, but one of them does not. Which one is not affected? The, the one which is parallel. Because we know that a parallel velocity, if velocity is parallel, so no magnetic force. Excellent. Yeah, this parallel component only carries this charged particle in the same direction of the magnetic field, from left to right. So, Parallel component is not affected by the magnetic field. But what does this parallel component do? It carries this charged particle from left to right. right in the direction of the magnetic field. What about vertical component? Perpendicular component. Perpendicular component. If charged particle is moving perpendicular to the magnetic field, maximum magnetic force acts on it, and the particle follows that. Circular path. Yeah, the perpendicular component of the velocity results in circular motion. Circular motion. Now, assume that my wrist is the charge. Because of this perpendicular component, the charge follows a circular path. But by the time my wrist is this, this carried in the direction of the magnetic field, yeah, it's making circle. At the same time, it is moving. So when it's moving like this, it follows a path, which is called a helical path, such a path. Yeah, it is circular motion and also moving. So it is yeah moving circle, a kind of moving circle. So my hand is the charge is following circle. At the same time, it is moving, so it follows a path which is called helical path, or in some things, called helix. It's an helix. This is such a path will be generated. Such a path will be generated. It's a circle, or it's a moving circle. Now, the path, charge follows a circle. At the same time, it is moving. So it forms a path. This path is called helical path. 
So now, this question is not asked till now in ministry, but they can ask it. If particle moves inclined to the magnetic field, what kind of path will the particle follow? Helical, Helical path. If particle moves perpendicular to the magnetic field, Sorry. what kind of path will it follow? Sorry. Circular path. If particle moves parallel to the magnetic field, Sorry. it follows a linear path. So these are three possible questions which can be administered. So about this part, okay? Any questions about this? Clear? Huh? Every helical path, helix, every helix has an axis. Axis of the helix is this line. Look at the axis of this helix. Is it in the same direction of the magnetic field? Yes. yes. Huh? As a result of these two components, yeah, uh, parallel component and the vertical component of the velocity, the charged particle follows helical path, and this helical path axis will be parallel to magnetic field lines. Okay. And inside story about this type. Inside story. Cathode train two. Okay. No question is asked about the inside story till now, but just I'm going to <coughs> explain the important part about this uh, inside story. Okay, this cathode tray tube is about the old fashioned televisions, first televisions. You know, they are very large televisions. Any of you see that? Of course. Yes, of course. So, very large televisions. But right now, uh, televisions are lead or plasma or LCD. Oh, no one uses such televisions right now. Huge, very big, huge bag. It's very so, small. Yes, the force on a moving charge due to magnetic field. Okay. The force on a moving charge due to magnetic field is called magnetic force. Huh? Yes. And the magnetic force is used to produce a picture on the television screen. This is the screen of the television. So on this screen, we will make a picture by using magnetic force due to a magnetic field acting on a charge point, which is moving. But the main component of television is cathode ray tube. The main component of television uh, is cathode ray tube. What is cathode ray tube? This is called cathode ray tube, right here. In which electric fields are used to form a beam of electrons. Mm. Remember I told you that only electric field can set charged particles into motion. So if you want to move electrons, you should first use electric, electric field. fields. Yes, here is an electric field where cathode means negative the charge point. It represents negatively charged point. Yeah, here is a metal which is negatively charged. And also here a plate, you see that, this is positive. Okay, electric field forms from positive plate to negative plate. Electric field forms from positive plate to negative plate, we studied it before. And this electric field in here is so strong because I wrote the equation, electric field is delta V over delta T when I was delta T over D. This is the separation between the plates Delta is the potential difference. Potential difference between these two plates are so high, maybe 3,000 volt, 4,000 volt, or more than that. If potential difference is so high, electric field is so strong. This strong electric field removes the electrons from the cathode, and electrons become free. Yeah, I mean, this high electric field removes the electron from this Cathode train, cathode, and this electron starts to move in the opposite direction of electric field, remember? So electrons are starting to move to the right. Why? Because electric field is to the left. And billions of electrons are starting to move one after another on a straight line path. Okay? But these electrons, if they continue moving like this, all they are going to hit the center of the screen. Center of the screen. And what is that at the center? There is an atom called phosphorus, phosphor. 
on television screen, which glows when it is struck by electrons in the beam. Yeah, these electrons are moving directly to the center and collides with phosphor atoms. In chapter 8, we will study if an electron hits an atom, electron slows down. So its energy is given to the atom. When an atom takes the energy, then it starts shining. It starts giving light just like this lamp. So you are going to see that at the center of the screen is white. Why is white? Because all the electrons are colliding in here. Only you are going to see that a region, a small region, which is white. But television screen. So everywhere you have to make the picture, not only the center. So then you should change the direction of the magnetic field. And you should change the direction of the electron beam. How can we change the direction of electric charge? By using magnetic fields, remember? Magnetic field, circular motion. The previous example. So it deflects up, deflects down, depending on direction of the magnetic field. So the direction of the beam is changed by two electromagnets. One is deflecting the beam up and down, the other one is deflecting the beam right and left. So beam is continuously deflecting in different directions. And when they strike the surface of the screen, they shine. It becomes white. That region. White. All, uh, first television is white only. Black and white. White is white. What does white mean? The region where electron strikes appears white. The region which electron does not strike appears dark. So black and white. So this electron beam is scanning the screen in one second, 50 times as I remember, 40 and 50 times. So it's scanning so fast, it's making a picture it's by striking uh, the phosphorus atoms. You see that there is a picture, but in fact, it is changing so quickly. So your human eye cannot detect a change in one second greater than 20. If it's Changes 20 times, greater than 20 times a screen, you think that it's a uh, movie. In fact, there are pictures down on the screen. But in one second, how many pictures? 50. There's 50 pictures in one second done by the electrons, and then you see these pictures as series of movement of the, what, the, the pictures. So, in this, uh, in this title, two things you have to know. One of them is how can you start? the uh, beam of electron by using electric fields. Electric field forms. Uh, electric fields are used to form beam of electrons. Then you send these electrons, but you need to change its direction. <coughs> How can you change the direction of the electric beam? By using electric field or magnetic field? Magnetic field. So, direction of the electron beam is changed by two electromagnets, which is produces magnetic field. So one is deflecting the beam horizontally, deflecting means changing direction horizontally. The other magnetic field changes direction vertically. So then by this way, the beam illuminates, illuminates means shines, the entire screen. Okay? Any questions about this? Clear?